Good morning. Very nice to have you all here with us this morning. Uh, we are glad that you're here, glad that you're joining us. Excuse me. Uh, just want to make a few announcements this morning. There are lots of announcements in your bulletin, and I would invite you to read those because I'm not going to make them all. I uh, just want to lift up a couple of things. There are numerous opportunities uh, to share your generosity during uh, this season. Uh, they are outlined for you in the bulletin. Hope you will take advantage of them. Uh, we do have WOW this Wednesday. Uh, also coming up Saturday is the Kids Holiday Shop and then Lessons and Carols at 2.30 next Sunday afternoon, the 12th. And then uh, finally, I just want to announce that uh, we will have a a special charge conference on Thursday, this coming Thursday evening, the 9th at 6.30. That'll be via Zoom. Uh, that's for the purpose of, of making a decision around the uh, class action suit that the uh, Boy Scouts of America are involved in. Uh, if you uh, would like to attend that um, that meeting, uh, please email me at my email address is there in the bulletin, uh, and I will make sure you get the information. 
Uh, we may not have it until Thursday morning uh, as far as how to join that meeting, but uh, if you want to be on that list, just email me and I'll make sure that you get, uh, get that. And uh, I think that's all the announcements that I am going to make. And I think the Brothertons are going to come and lead us in the lighting of our Advent week. Please stand. Please join me in the opening prayer. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warning and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
And now with joy and thanksgiving, let us offer our gifts to God. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we give thanks to you for all the gifts that you have given to us, and in praise and thanksgiving we offer you these gifts in return. Bless the givers and the gifts and those who have not to give. Use our gifts and us to do your work in the world, to spread your gospel throughout the earth, and to bring glory to your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank mm -hmm. you. be seated. Ian, you want to come up? You want to come up? No? Fair enough. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Listen. Listen the word of God. 
I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will set as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in the days gone by, as in the former years. The word of God for the people of God. In our Gospel reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, again listen to the Word of God. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, while Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod the Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Etria, and Trachonois, and Lysinius, Tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caius, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough way smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, our Advent series this year is Signs of the Season, and this week's sermon is The Sign of John, that is, John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the forerunner of Jesus. Uh, He is the one that spoke about in the Old Testament, in Micah, and in Isaiah, and in a couple other places, as as the one that comes before, the one who announces the arrival of Jesus. Um, John the Baptist was a relative of Jesus. We we think a, a second cousin, probably, because his mother Elizabeth was a cousin of Mary, which would have made him a second cousin of Jesus. And John's mission was to prepare the way of the Lord. And the imagery that the the scripture gives us is that of preparing a highway, um, of, of, of raising up the low places, of bringing down the high places, of making the crooked path straight, or, or, um, straightening the curbs, flattening the hills, as a theme song from a television show of my youth once said, Duke's a hazard. Um, I, I, as I read this, I think about uh, just before I moved uh, from Tama County, uh, where I was for eight years before coming here, um, they had begun working on Highway 30 in uh, western Tama and east, or eastern Tama and western Benton counties, um, turning, going from four la- two lanes into four lanes. Has anybody driven that stretch of Highway 30, the two lane? that goes through uh, western Benton County, eastern Tama County. It's, 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 uh, it's a road. <laughs> uh, uh, curbs and hills and dips and two lanes, and it's actually quite dangerous. And so uh, they, uh, just as I was leaving that community, they were doing the prep work, just beginning the prep work of, of turning that into two lanes and beginning to cut down the trees and beginning to do some of the grading work, uh, leveling things out and straightening things out. Indeed, a lot of prep work had to go into that. And that's what John came to do. John came to prepare the way of the Lord, to get the the community of Israelites 
ready to receive Jesus for the first time. And he was always pointing to Jesus. He, he, he is uh, instrumental to the following of the first disciples of Jesus in the Gospel of John as he points out Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. As uh, Jesus' ministry was, was coming into its own and John's ministry began to go into its decline, which would lead to his martyrdom, John said, he must increase, that is Jesus, he must increase, I must decrease. See, John John said he wasn't, he wasn't the way, I'm not the way, I've come to prepare the way, and when the way comes, I need to get out of the way. It reminds me of the quote from Count von Zinzendorf, the founder of the Moravian movement, uh, and a deep influence on the life of John Wesley. Uh, he told his missionaries, preach the gospel, die, and be forgotten. Preach the gospel, die, and be forgotten. And that is my hope. That was John's hope for his life, even though he wasn't forgotten. And that is my hope for my life, that I will preach the gospel and die and be forgotten. Because I want to see Jesus increase. John wanted to see Jesus increase. And so John's message, that is his mission, was to prepare the way of the Lord. His message, the way he called people to prepare the way of the Lord, was repentance. Repentance is how the rough places became smooth. Repentance is how the crooked ways became straight. Repentance is how the valleys are lifted up and filled in, and repentance is how the, the hills are leveled off. Repentance is how a heart is prepared to receive a Savior and receive salvation. If we read on in, in Luke chapter 3, we will see that, that uh, John even called the called the um, tax collectors and soldiers to repentance, but not in the way we would have thought. Because we would have thought that a tax collector seeking repentance, John would, John would have said, well, first of all, you've got to stop being a tax collector. You've got to stop being a soldier. But that's not what John said. Instead of what John said to the tax collectors, you know, do your job. Collect what you're supposed to collect. Leave it at that. To the soldier, do your job. Don't abuse people, don't take advantage of people, don't use your position to your own advantage. You do your duty. So what is repentance? If repentance is the way we prepare, if Advent is the season we repair, prepare, and, and repentance is the way we prepare, then what is repentance? Well, repentance is a lot, is a lot more than being sorry Repentance at its heart requires three things of us to be complete. It requires an acknowledgement of sin. That means, yes, there's a list of things who are, who, that are sins. Who wrote that list? God did. God wrote the list of the things that are sin, right? So who didn't write that list? We didn't. We didn't write the list. Don't, don't you wish you could make up your own sin list? Because there'd be some things you'd leave off of it, wouldn't you? Who here has a favorite sin? Or, or let me not even be so, let me not even be so blunt. We all have a favorite sin. How many of you have a sin that you just can't seem to get rid of? And it'd be a whole lot easier if it wasn't on the list. It'd be a whole lot easier if we got to make our own list. And, and probably, if we got to make our own list, the things we'd say are sins are the things we don't like in the first place. Right? I'd, I'd put broccoli at the top of the sin list. Right? Um, you know, I, I... But we don't get to make our own list. We don't get to make our own list. We don't get to take things off of God's list. God decides what sin is. And the first step... To repentance is that we have to agree with God about what's on the list. Step one, acknowledge sin. Uh, step two, confess sin. Right? So these are the things that are on the list. I did those things. I'm a sinner. 
and I'm sorry. Step three, turn from sin. Now, you need to know that, that the act of turning is at first takes place in the mind long before we actually manage to actually live it out in our lives. The commitment comes first, and then gradually we're enabled to live it out. But the commitment has to be there. That's the repentance part, the desire to turn from sin. And all those things have to go together to create repentance. And sometimes we short-circuit that. Sometimes we, 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 want to, we want to edit the list, take the things we like to do off the list, and then we don't, we, we don't repent. Sometimes we'll say, yes, uh, yes, that's on the list, but I don't do that. Or somehow my way of doing it's different than other people's doing it. So we can't get to the second stage. And then the third stage is, yes, yes, it's wrong. Yes, I did it, but I just, I don't want to give it up. It's the wanting to give it up that's the hardest part, maybe, than the actual doing it. Even if we continue to struggle, we have to want to not do it. And so Advent is, the season of Advent is about preparing. That's what we do. That's what we do. We, we, we're preparing during Advent. Um, when we, when we um, decorate our homes and our churches, decorate our stores, decorate our places of business, when we, when we make cookies and other holiday delights, when we go shopping, when we do all these things, they are about preparing for Christmas, preparing for the arrival of the Savior. And I want to suggest to you uh, that we can think about those things rather than simply materialistically, we can think about them sacramentally. That is, they can be outward and visible signs and inward and spiritual grace. They can be outward activities that are symbolic of the inward preparation that we're doing in our hearts to prepare for the coming of Jesus. As it says in the carol, let every heart prepare him room. And so our mission, like John's, is about preparing ourselves and others to receive the Savior. Let all these things that we do be symbols for us of the repentance and openness that we need to prepare our hearts to receive anew our Savior. Let, let our acts of generosity, our acts of cheer spreading, joy spreading, during this season be, be symbolic, be sacramental of helping other people's hearts open to Jesus. May everything we do be about opening and cleansing our hearts to receive the Savior. Let every part prepare him room. And the first step to that preparation is repentance. The first step to that preparation is repentance, acknowledging sin, confessing sin, turning from sin. Repentance is hard, and sometimes it's, it's a process. As I read about John's message to repentant tax collectors and soldiers, and talking about what repentance might look like for them, at least initially, I'm reminded of a story I once heard about uh, a church service down in, in the mountains of, of uh, Kentucky. I was, actually born in, I was actually born in Kentucky, in western Kentucky, where there aren't any mountains. Those are in eastern Kentucky. But in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, I heard a, about a church service. And uh, there's a really good church service. Holy Spirit started moving. Uh, people started getting saved, and, and suddenly this, this old boy jumped up in the back, and he said, he said, folks, you know that I'm a moonshiner. Made moonshine all my life. I'm a third generation moonshiner. He says, and you know, all these years, 
I've been cutting my moonshine with water. Saved a little bit of money. He said, but friends, I want you to know that I got saved tonight. I found Jesus. And I can tell you right now, y'all ain't getting nothing but the straight stuff from me from now on. That in its way is repentance. May it be so with us. Let us prepare for the arrival of our Savior. Let us repent of our sins. Let us follow the sign of John. Let us pray. God, we admit that these first two Sundays of Advent strike us a bit off guard. In a season when we're expecting to talk about happiness and joy and peace and, and, uh, and all those things. Now the first Sunday of Advent hits us with this stark message of the return of Jesus and all the anxiety that, that brings. And then in the second Sunday of Advent along comes John calling us to repent. But God, we know that if we're ever, if we're ever going to experience Christmas, if we're ever going to experience the arrival of Jesus into our hearts, it has to begin with repentance. So God, I pray that you'd pour a spirit of repentance into our hearts today. And God, as we come to receive this sacrament of, of forgiveness and repentance today, God, may we do so in a spirit of true repentance that acknowledges sin, confesses sin, and turns. God, we pray for our church. We pray that you bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and in truth and serve the world in your name. God, we pray for the whole body of Christ throughout the world. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the United Methodist Church, for this annual conference, and our Bishop Lori, this district, and our superintendent, God. We pray for our community, our nation, and our world in these troubled times. God, we pray for all the people and places who are in need, all those that are sick, all those that are suffering, all those that are struggling. God, we pray for men and women who serve us at home and abroad. We pray for our, our military and for our veterans, for our law enforcement and our first responders, for our missionaries and relief workers, for our health care workers and all those that serve our communities. God, we pray for our world leaders at every level. We pray for ourselves, our families, our church our community, our nation, and the whole world, the blessings of peace, justice, health, safety, freedom, stability, prosperity, and holiness. And now, oh God, we pray that you hear the prayers of each and every heart that is worshiping with us today, either here in the sanctuary or at home, as we lift up our prayers to you, either silently or aloud, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you've heard our prayers here this morning, and you hear the prayers that remain silent upon our hearts. Oh God, you know our every need, and when we do not know how to pray, your spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. God, we pray that you hear us now as we lift our voices together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the 
power and the glory forever. And now I invite you to stand and join me in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for communion today, we're going to receive, as we did last month, um, if you'd come down the center aisle, um, I will hand you a wafer. Uh, the best way to receive that is with an open open hand. Uh, and then uh, as you come down the center aisle and then off to each side, depending on what side you're seated on, um, the next station uh, server will offer you a cup. And then there are waste baskets uh, for those cups uh, before you turn and, and return to your seats. Uh, for those of you who are joining us online, I'd invite you to an act of spiritual communion. Uh, but having said that, if you need to be served at home or need to make arrangements with, to meet me here to be served at another time, uh, please, please reach out to me. I'm very happy to do that. Dear friends, the United Methodist Church practices open communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all those who truly love him, all those who earnestly repent of their sins, and all those who seek to live in peace with one another. And young children are welcome to participate at the discretion of their parents. Therefore, let us prepare ourselves to receive this holy sacrament by confessing and repenting of our sins in silence. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, 
we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send empty away. Your own Son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of this suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast to this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
Would you please join me in the prayer after communion? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Experience in grace, exploring truth, expressing love.